head and freak knuckles and we're at pumpkin hill you ready i ain't gonna let it get to me i'm just gonna creep down in pumpkin hill i got to find my lost piece i know that it's here i can sense it in my feet the great emerald's power allows me to feel i can't see a thing but it's around somewhere i'm gonna hold my head because i have no fear this probably seems crazy crazy a graveyard theory our ghosts try to approach me and got leery ask him a question and he vanished in a second i'm walking through valleys crying pumpkin in the alley didn't seem happy but they sure tried to get me had to back him up with a fist metal cracker i'm hearing someone saying you a chicken don't be scared it had to be the wind because nobody wasn't there i searched and i searched as i climbed up the wall and then i started to fly i went in deep oh, let it get to me i'm just gonna creep down pumpkin hell i got to find my lost piece i know that it's here i sense it in my feet the great emerald's power allows me to feel i can't see a thing but it's around somewhere i gotta hold my head i have no fear it probably seem crazy crazy a graveyard theory a ghost try to approach me he got there
Alright. Hello. Hi. Welcome. It's me. It's Gage. Hello, Pertodzer. Welcome to the Shark Stream. And welcome to another installment of Survival Horror Saturdays. Or at least what is currently Survival Horror Saturdays. Who knows if it will remain Survival Horror Saturdays when I run out of survival horror games to play. God, what a terrible world that would be to live in. It would probably just become like, I don't know, fucking Sonic Saturdays at that point, I'm sure. <coughs> but yes, hi, welcome. Um, so, ooh, excuse me. To start out, uh, I unfortunately did not end up streaming Halo 2 yesterday with uh, my wife Natalie like intended. Um, it turned out that the ex the secondary Xbox that we have, we have an Xbox One uh, that I uh, had used prior to getting a Series X, um, needed a one gig update, and then it turned out that the Master Chief Collection needed a 34 gig update, which, why? I don't know, but fucking whatever, I guess. Um, so unfortunately, we did not have the time... Uh, to play Halo 2 yesterday, so yesterday's stream needed to be cancelled. Um, we will be trying again, probably in a couple of weeks, since I think this n upcoming week is going to be a another um, guest stream with Team Catpole on Friday. Um, but, you know, stay tuned check my Twitter for any sort of announcements, so on and so forth. Tune in here to find out exactly what's going to be going on. Uh, and yeah. So today we're going to be playing Dead Space 3. Now, Dead Space 3 is the third mainline Dead Space game, as you can probably guess just based on the title. Um, now, at this point in the series, the whole idea of, like, the multimedia, like, Blitzkrieg that they have been doing for, like, previous Dead Space games, releasing, like, oh, there's a Dead Space comic, there's, uh, the animated movie, here's a spin-off game, here comes Dead Space 2, here's two more spin-off games, here's another animated movie, and another comic. Um, that had kind of died down a little bit. Dead Space 3 didn't really get much in the way of, like, multimedia, um, promotion, uh, beyond a motion comic called Dead Space Liberation. We're going to be talking more about Liberation when we get to, uh, our second playthrough of, well, I mean, I guess technically my third playthrough of Dead Space 3 on stream, but our second playthrough of Dead Space 3 where we will be playing as John Carver, the co-op character. How are, so how are you doing today, Shark? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I got a headache. So that sucks. But hopefully, like, I've taken, um, I've, I've taken, uh, some Aleve, uh, and I'm drinking an energy drink, so I'm hoping, it, uh, generally speaking, things like, uh, caffeinated drinks or energy drinks will tend to, um, they open up the blood vessels in your brain. That's kind of how they, like, give you the energy. So they widen them. Um, it's sort of like the opposite uh, effect that, like, say, say um, alcohol has, where it constricts blood vessels. Um, and uh, generally that can sometimes help headaches, depending on the kind of headache you've got. Um, I'm hoping that uh, having this will imp improve my, my state of mind. That state of mind being, ouch! Um, but yeah, so Dead Space 3 didn't really have a whole lot in terms of cross-media promotion. There was a comic, there was a motion comic series that was released as a physical comic, which, as I mentioned, we're going to be getting into when we get to, uh, what I'm referring to as Episode Carver, which is essentially us playing through the game again, um, on co-op as the second character, which, uh, friend of the stream and roommate JB will be helping me with. Um, and then, uh, let me think. Um, there was also a second novel uh, that I can't recall the name of off the top of my head, but it was weird because the second novel doesn't really have any sort of bearing on the story. Like, 
every single other piece of Dead Space media has had some bearing on the story, you know? Um, the uh, initial comic run uh, discusses what happened on Aegis 7 following the extraction of the marker. Um, the an first animated movie um, breaks down what happened on the... <clears throat> excuse me. What happened on the... Um, uh, what's it called? The the Ishimura, um, how the infection got aboard the Ishimura, um, how things went so poorly, well, like what happened to some of the characters. Does your head have a hole in it, or is it just pierced by the shark part? There isn't a straight answer for that, but I think it's funnier to assume that I punched a hole in it with the fin. <laughs> I think that's I think that's a a funny concept, so it's it's what I tend to go with. Um. And then, of course, Dead Space Martyr tells the story of Michael Altman. Dead Space Salvage tells about uh, them finding the Ishimura after the events of Dead Space 1. Um, Extraction tells... Uh, kind of, like, crosses between, like, events on the surface of Aegis 7, the uh, events of the... or and, like, the outbreak on the Ishimura, um, which then ties into the DLC for Dead Space 2. Uh, <clears throat> Dead Space Mobile talks about how, like, this is how the outbreak spread, basically. Um, Dead Space Ignition uh, is all about the guy that frees Isaac Clarke at the start of Dead Space 2. So everything... And then Liberation talks about John Carver leading into Dead Space 3. So everything up to this point um, has served some kind of purpose to the greater narrative. Um, but the second Dead Space novel, from what I understand doesn't it's just kind of here's another story set within the dead space universe here's a prison that necromorphs happen at um and also has like some weird attitudes about mental illness where like i think a character being having mental illness makes him immune to the marker somehow and like the most that it gets referenced in the game like you know, Martyr, Dead Space Martyr, is like, it's about Michael Altman. Fucking motherfuckers all the time talk be talking about Michael Altman. <clears throat> but I don't think um, the second novel gets a whole lot of reference outside of, like, the planet that it takes place on being mentioned in, like, an audio file or something. I'm not too sure. So... Uh, we probably won't be reading that one on stream uh, for any sort of a book club. Um, but I am thinking about possibly doing the Bioshock novel, seeing as they just announced the fourth Bioshock... Or they, there's details coming out, rather, about the fourth Bioshock game being in Antarctica, which I'm super interested in, actually. Um, <clears throat> I'm curious to see what happens with that one and if they will maintain a clear vi vision of it. Uh, throughout development, which is kind of what fucked over uh, Infinite quite a bit, actually. I heard that Dead Space 3 is mid. Um, yes. I would say that that is probably an accurate assumption. I wouldn't necessarily call Dead Space 3 an awful game by any mean, by any definition, by any means. Um, but, like, if you're looking for a good Dead Space game, you're better off playing, like, one or two. Preferably two, because two is just like the best one, but like one's pretty good. I would I would keep an eye out for the remake. Um, but Dead Space 3 Dead Space 3 occupies an interesting place in my mind because there have been times where I've just been bored out of my fucking skull. Wanting to play something, but not knowing what to play. And I've kind of cultivated this habit of like if I ever get in that state of mind where it's just like I want to play something but I don't know what to play. What I end up playing is Dead Space 3. Because I don't I don't know. Dead Space 3 is just kind of a fun game just to sort of like play with my brain turned off, I guess. Um But yeah. So, we're going to go ahead and uh get started here. I'm waiting for the audio to start playing my games here. All right, so let's uh, let's get the music paused.
and let's dive in. So Dead Space 3 is pretty well known for um, the degree of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, executive meddling that unfortunately hurt its overall vision. <clears throat> um, things about, like, stuff, fucking stuff like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna force you to put in, like, this crafting system and microtransactions and, oh, we need, the, the kid, the kids like the ship wars. We need a, a love triangle. Kids like relationship drama, I guess. And unfortunately, uh, one of the characters that really kind of gets hit hard. There's crafting in Dead Space now. There is. I won't show off a lot of the crafting because, like, I've actually got a. Um, <clears throat> pretty solid sort of like loadout of weapons that I tend to use. So the prologue for Dead Space 3 starts 200 years in the past uh, during a, a sort of intergalactic civil war between uh, either EarthGov or what will become EarthGov and what's referred to as the Sovereign Colonies. Um, and from the, from what I understand, the Sovereign Colonies were the ones who were really kind of, like, going ham with, like, marker research at the time. Like, they're the ones that created, like, the red marker that you find in, uh, that they find for, like, Dead Space 1. Um, and part of that is because they are losing the war, uh, with EarthGov. And as such, they are looking to the markers for, like, alternate power sources that would allow them to not have to worry about, like, resource management anymore. <clears throat> oh shit, I've got the fucking retro filter on, just right out the gate. Hold on, can I pause? Oh, hold on. It is under game settings. Okay, retro mode off. <laughs> I don't want to show that off yet. Retro mode's one of the unlock one of the, like the the neater unlockables that you can get uh, by doing some of the other some of the new game plus uh, modes, of which there are a few. I think there's just standard New Game Plus, there's Classic, there's Hardcore, and there's Pure Survival. I think regular New Game Plus and Pure Survival get you, like... I also need to make sure that I've got, um... Subtitles on. Subtitles are on. I think New Game Plus and Pure Survival get you, like, uh... Like, crafting parts. But Classic and Hardcore uh, get you some neat shit. Which I will be showing off. Alpha Niner, this is Whiskey 250. Come on. Alpha Niner, this is Whiskey 250. Serrano, do you read me? Jim! Oh, thank God! Did you find it? Find it. Doc, I'm not I even got a sure burger that I'm eating also, so bear with me if you hear any crinkling paper. That's me taking off the burger's peel. What? Do y'all eat your burgers with or without the peel? You know, I know that's where the, that's where they say all the nutrients are, but never really been my thing. So here we are with our boy Tim Kaufman. Average weather in Russia. <laughs> Okay, Tim. You can do this. 
Oh, he's dependent on you. You're a soldier, right? <laughs> right. Gun's not even loaded. Oh shit, he ain't kidding. We got zero bullets. I mentioned this before, but right away you might be recognizing that, like, hey, this is 200 years in the past and they have a lot of the same technology that hey, they've already I'm got sorry. in... Can that they've still it? got it's in, like, Dead Space 1 and 2. There must be a way. And I don't know exactly how intended it was, if it was just like, oh, well, we need them to have the same technology just for, like, maintaining continuity of, like, gameplay function ah, between... Finally, some ammunition. Like, the rest of the series in Dead Space 3, but there's also, like, a sort of deeper implication of humanity, like, being innovative, in innovatively, 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 stagnant. Like, this is it. This is as good as their tech's ever going to get, and no one will have made any real improvements in the course of 200 years. Also... Now, you may just look at these guys and think, oh, that's just a man. You may think, oh, that is just a man. But no, this is a necromorph. Stop. Found a way in. Good. You're looking for a cylinder about half a meter long. Do you see it? Are those Twitter users or COD zombies? Bada bing. Got them. Um, so, one of the major... Um, inspirations for Dead Space 3, or at least the back half of Dead Space 3, as well as this prologue, uh, is of course John Carpenter's thing. Um, that's why you've got a character named uh, John Carpenter. So, um, that, uh, that inspiration is pretty clear in these particular enemies um, that just look like mans, but can also do Come on, do, do the thing. Okay, he wasn't going to do the thing. Ah! Oh! I'm trying to get one of them to... Damn, really? These guys can, um... Oh, hey man, how's it going? Hanging in there? Oh. Well, that sounds fun. Um... They will occasionally. It might not. It might not actually happen until we find them in like the main campaign outside of the prologue. Those are straight up COD zombies, man. Um, but like, uh, if you take out their arms or their legs, they will transform and sprout tentacles, and then just keep coming at you. It's actually pretty cool. I got it. But I do know that there are some folks out there that, like, aren't huge fans of how human some of the enemies in this game are, um, up to and including enemies that are just humans with guns, which, yeah, is a little dull compared to, like, what you would normally get. Where are you? Hey, Doc, I'm gonna head to the planet! What I got, whatever this is! Stop for anyone, huh? Well, I sure hope there isn't somebody at the bottom of this hill that I will inevitably stop for, despite Serrano's warning. This is not an idiot, you see. Ah, beans! Oh, oh, shit! Thread the needle. Nailed it. Minor. <laughs> A bluff? 
Oh, a dead man. Ooh, several dead mans. Tim, we maybe want to get out of here. This seems like a bad scene all around. Fine young soldiers, every one of them. <clears throat> General Mahad, sir. Where's Dr. Serrano? Human Pinata. Earl Serrano, always the optimist. Well, he said I should take this into the city. He said there's still time to stop it, sir. There's still time. We lost control. And now, for the love of Earth, and the sovereign colonies, we've got to do what's right. Okay. Sure. You love the Earth, son. Your mom and dad. Yeah, yes, sir. Course. That's a weird question to ask, but okay. Glad to hear that. Whoa. Uh -oh. Delhi, Ted. Oh, this fucking guy. I love this guy. We'll, t we'll talk about that guy, don't worry. Go to that thing, he was up in like 21221. It was password. Playback, message 34. Isaac, I know you're there. Come on, pick up the phone. Fine. Look, I just called to say I'm moving on. I have to. Just take care of yourself, okay? All right, have a good night. Au revoir. Oh, spooky. Don't like that. Don't like that. Now, I think I planned out my loadout uh, before starting, so. US Clark, get the fuck off. Hey, to me. Tim. Who the hell are you? Lift him up. A lot of time, so I want to make this brief. I understand you're something of an expert oh, on Mars. This fucking one. guy. I make shit. Your government made me. And you destroyed two, which is why we're here. I got a job for you. No. No. I'm done with that. You find somebody else for your suicide mission. We did. Before we lost contact with her, she told us to find you. Ellie. Where is she? What did you do to her? Where is she? Ah, fuck. Unitologists have breached the inner concourse. We can't hold them! Captain, run out of time, gotta go! She's out there all alone, Isaac, and I can't help her unless you help me. Okay. Okay! <clears throat> Here. Let's get moving. This game is also why I think the idea of what you look at your hand for Isaac hmm whoa what did your fingers just do okay okay so I did start with the loadout I <coughs> the loadout I like all right so um what was I saying? This game is also why I really think it's funny whenever, like, um... Uh, Dead Space Media tries to, like, have, like, quote-unquote nice unitologists in it. Because by this game, unitologists are just, like, an army. And they're, like, actually killing people. Audio message waiting. Playback. Message 33. Caller. Earthrise Apartment. This message is for the residents of Apartment 16. Your rent is past due. This is your final notice. Failing to pay in three days will result in eviction. 
Well, guess I'm leaving. <laughs> God, Isaac's apartment is a fucking shithole. Jesus. Okay, I said I'd help you. Now, where's Ellie? How long has she been missing? Just shut up and get over here. We'll explain later. What I like about, uh, so, unfortunately, we don't get to keep this outfit in any meaningful capacity, but, uh, this outfit is actually, um, part of the hacker outfit from Dead Space 2, the one that I w wore for most of it, um, with some minor alterations. Uh, it's got the same, like, jacket and t-shirt, uh, there's some, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, tactical bits that have been removed, obviously it doesn't have the helmet. Larked. We can't pick that up because I'm already, like, full up on shit. <laughs> because I've kept, like, all of my stuff from, like, earlier playthroughs. So this, I've got two weapons right now. Um, something that's, some, like I've said, uh, Dead Space 3 has a weapon crafting system that is actually pretty involved and honestly pretty cool. Uh, you can make some cool stuff, especially if you start like finding like blueprints and things for like um, pre-made weapons. Um, I will say... Uh, the classic mode is actually pretty neat because you can only craft like weapons from like previous ga from uh, previous games. So like anything that was in a previous game, you can craft. They may not look exactly like they did in the previous games, but um, they're essentially there. What I've got right now, I believe, is the Planet Cracker uh, plasma cutter, um, which I think is either a uh, pre-order thing or a um, special edition thing but it's your it's a standard plasma cutter i've gotten it tricked out uh a little bit so that i automatically pick up ammo collectibles if i walk over them and i think it also automatically reloads um once once i've uh used up a clip uh but otherwise it's a pretty standard plasma cutter um i've beefed up like the attack power and the reload and everything um and then this this is called the mjolnir <laughs> And it is an arc lightning gun uh, with a pneumatic hammer attachment. Um, it's probably one of my favorite craftable weapons in the game, and I'll I'll show it off when we uh, get into combat. But it's it's pretty nuts, actually. Um, these are scavenger bots. We'll talk more about them later. Um, and then, of course, because I've beaten uh, classic mode, I've also got this game's foam finger weapon, uh, which I will also show off. It's called the Devil Horns. Hey, who the hell are you guys? Earth Gov's last battalion. Name's Norton. Captain Robert Norton. Sergeant John Carver. Last battalion? What do you mean? Last means last, genius, as in no more left. Looks clear. No more left? There's our right. Let's go. All right, I'm going, I'm going. Oh, jeez. Ah, oh, fuck. Ah, oh, beans. Uh-oh. Don't do that. Oh. Oh, shit. So these are straight up human enemies. Like, these are- these are guys. Like, these are dudes, you know? Oh! As such, they go down pretty easy. Like, you can, you can get them with, like, headshots or, like, generally removing any of their limbs will put them out of commission. So getting, like, strategic with, like, cutting off, like, oh, you gotta cut off this limb or that limb <clears throat> is not so much of a concern with them. Why are they trying to kill us? You! They're trying to kill you! What? 
Get get out of there. Shut your trap. Uh, Norton, uh, Robert Norton, of course, um, actually shares a last name uh, with Vandal from the mobile game, uh, whose uh, real name is Carrie Norton. Uh, no indication as to whether or not this is uh, important or relevant, or if they are in Why fact related. You've destroyed markers in the past, I think that makes you a direct threat to their plan. Plan? Some end time prophecy based on the markers. Convergence? Yeah, Ellie thinks you could stop it. So now she's missing and they followed you here? Yes, now get to the roof of the Dredger Corp building. There's an extraction team waiting. Dredger Corp, you say? So, uh, just real quick. This is a uh, suit kiosk. That is a bench. Uh, we can't use them right now because I'm playing like the standard single player uh, mode. Which means that in these early chapters, uh, we do not have access to those yet. But if you're playing this on like true New Game Plus, um, then you actually do have access to those and you can. Uh, use special weapons, or you can, like, craft weapons and, uh, use new, um, outfits. Uh, within... This is just a solid object in the environment. Uh, but you can use, uh, you can craft new weapons or, uh, get new suits. Um all within these early chapters as well. But right now we're uh, we're stuck using like the basic stuff. Oh. That man got fucking obliterated by cars. Um right right now uh, up until a certain point we'll only be able to use like basically just kind of what the game allows us to have. Shit. I've hit the freeway. Then cross it. They're unmanned transports. They don't stop for Oop. anything. Bumped my mic, sorry. I've still got my stasis unit. I'll slow the traffic and get across. Can't imagine how poorly this will go. Right. I only stopped one car. Oops. <laughs> I love that that's his reaction. It's like, whoopsie daisies. Alright. Uh, I think time has come uh, to show off the Mjolnir. There should be some enemies popping in eventually. So, arc lightning. Pew! So I believe the Arc Lightning can jump between up to three enemies at a time. Um, with uh, the most damage being on like the enemy you initially hit with it. And then the additional enemies uh, being damaged slightly less. Oh, also, Dead Space 3 uh, introduces a really good quality of life where if you are full up on uh, health items, but you are low on health, any more health, health items that you pick up will be automatically um, applied to your uh, HP. So, Treasure Corp. If you tuned in to the Dead Space... M if you have... T if What am I fucking trying to say? If you tuned in or have watched uh, the Sharkstream Book Club for Dead Space Martyr, you will recognize Dredger Corp as being the company that found the initial black marker uh, in the Chicxulub Crater uh, and who are responsible for basically everything bad that's ever happened in this series. Gabor, holographic accessories. Man, I wish I could get cool hologram on my face. That'd be dope. Oh, yeah! Kitty Kitty Bang Bang. I think... I think Kitty Kitty Bang Bang uh, was also in Dead Space 2. I think it's like a movie? Possibly? Or it's a concept, like Pang. Oh, hey! 
Let's listen to this dude's shit. So clearly, uh, things not going well at Dredger Corp. I'm gonna go ahead and eat burger while this guy's talking. Jacob Danik. Brothers and sisters. The age joint. This isn't just a manhunt. It's systematic slaughter. Oh, you notice. But why topple the government? Why Earth Gov? Danik blames them for experimenting with the marker. Thinks it's heresy. So you can imagine what they think of you. Have you reached the extraction site yet? I'm almost there. I think we're immediately going to get a cutscene when this reaches the top. Pretty sure. This one's still alive. Bring him here. Uh oh. For. Oh, don't waste your energy. You're going to be dead in a matter of minutes. Pick him up. There's something I'd like you to see. There. You see that? That's a marker test lab. They're everywhere at all the major colonies and outposts. What do you want from me? As part of the marker test program, Isaac, you help make them. And today, you of all people get to watch me set them free. No. No. You'll kill everyone. Death is only the beginning, Isaac. Nature must take its course, and I can't allow you or anyone else to stop that. Eyes forward, Isaac. Pay attention. <clears throat> well, that's no good. for you to join the cycle. Oh shit. Wow, thank god they threw all these bodies down here to soften my fall. So you'll recognize that trumpeting noise as uh, what also happened in Dead Space 2 when Convergence began. Uh, which means... Things aren't going well right now for uh, this for the Lunar Colony. <laughs> Uh oh. Oh, don't do that. Nope, stop that. I'm gonna take that. Take this. Oh shit! So now that we're starting to get into like the necromorph enemies, you'll see uh, uh, how the Mjolnir works. Generally speaking, uh, with the way that I have it like beefed up and tricked out right now, um, a uh, single shot from it will kill the initial enemy that it connects with um, and then damage uh, any other enemies around it to the point that if they get hit with like a secondary damage from it uh, again that will kill them 
there's the marker. Just kind of hanging out, and now things are just going to go super poorly for everyone involved. I've talked about Danik before, but Danik is one of my favorite kinds of, like, cult bosses in video games, and that is the kind that are, like, true believers to the end. Like, we're not talking about a guy here who's in it for the grift, or, like, somebody who is on board up to the point that, like, he's in danger. Like, no. Danik is 100%, like, he is just as, like, obsessed with killing, like, everything in the universe for the purposes of, uh, fulfilling, like, this end time prophecy as literally any other unitologist, regardless of where they are in, like, the church hierarchy. And I genuinely appreciate that about him. Like, it's way more... It's, in my mind, way more compelling as a villain uh, than, say, someone who is in it for the grift. Someone who is here because, like, oh, me be part church, make money. I get money. They, they love me, make, give me the cash monies. Give me those fucking tithes, baby. Now, one thing about um, Dead Space 3 that is unfortunately uh, uh, missing from Dead Space 2 is uh, this sort of thing. Um, the uh, files that you can collect do not respawn in the environment. So, like... Uh, E through each chapter, you'll find, like, um... Recorded. You'll find, like, uh... Bu -bu 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 -bu, what's the word I'm looking for? Um... Artifacts? If you're playing on, like, a brand new file. And these artifacts are essentially, like, the text files. Personal journal Isaac Clark. We each lost part of ourselves during Nightmare on Titan Sprawl. For Elliot, it was her eye. Luckily, we found a replacement we could afford. Even though the color doesn't quite match, at least she can feel whole again. Me, I lost part of my soul, and there's not a damn thing I could do to buy that back. I guess, ultimately, that's why she left. People want things they can fix, and I'm permanently broken. EarthGov Artifact. Excerpt from An End to EarthGov. EarthGov's officials yesterday denied rumors that the government was no longer able to contain the widespread violence that has gripped the colonies in the recent weeks. The violence began 16 days ago on Uxor, following a year-long campaign by the Church of Unitology. Five colonies have gone dark since the Unitology riots began. There have been rumors of bombings at government laboratories and eyewitness accounts of brutal killings following shortly after. So yeah, the Unitologists have gone full fucking just like, we're going to kill everybody. Uh, Unitologist Artifact. Missive to the Faithful. When the Black Marker was first discovered on Earth so long ago, the government at the time hid all evidence of it from us. When our prophet Michael Altman spoke out against them, he was silenced. Now EarthGov continues that legacy. They tamper with the markers, making blasphemous copies as part of their secret research programs. They have taken our sacred relic and turned it into a disease. But nature has ways of correcting itself. By liberating the markers, we can end this cycle of death and begin the cycle of rebirth. Join me as we take back our future, the future the Marker promises to us all. Jacob Arthur Danik. Oh, and I nearly forgot, we have uh, chapter titles again. So, uh, one second, let me... Dead Space 3 Chapters... Because much like uh, the other Dead Space games with chapter titles, uh, there is a secret message! Oh my god, why are fandom wikis so fucking bad? It's not even just that fandom wikis are bad, it's... and like, horribly put together. But like, a lot of times they're like the only real source of information that you can... like... 
go to, I guess. Anyways, so our first... So, the prologue, which we do need to we do need to consider here. The name of the prologue was Beginnings. And uh, chapter one is Rude Awakening. So, we've got BR, Battle Rifle. Halo crossover. Imminent. No. Anyway. Okay, we gotta we gotta fight we gotta go. We gotta get out of this fucking room. But yeah. I like Danik as a villain. Um I like this specific kind of like cult asshole. Have you the team yet? All dead. Danik got here first. Fuck. Then find a way out of the city. I'm coming in with the Eudora. Washington station's not far. I can ride one of the trains out. Good plan. See you on the tracks. So yeah, Isaac's diary indicates that they did get a new eye for Ellie, which sucks. She should she should have kept the eye patch. I don't know what it is with media being like we this character lost an eye, and we gave them this super dope eye patch look. And then being like, actually, no, they have a false eye now. They ha they have a new eyeball to use. And it's just like, I don't want this. Alright, since we're starting in on uh, Necromorphs, we're going to go ahead and bust out the Old Faithful. Um, Dead Space 1 and 2, I believe, both have achievements for uh, using nothing but the Plasma Cutter for the whole campaign. Dead Space 3, unfortunately, has no such achievement, and that is in part because uh, the Plasma Cutter... The Plasma Cutter's importance is kind of downplayed due to the fact that we've got the um, uh, weapon crafting now. Let's take a look here. What we got here? EarthGov. This looks like a cereal box, not a book. To the moon. Moon. Aboard. Safely today. Need help? Eon News. Unitol. Oh god, the fucking texture quality here. Moon glow. Oh, this music's kind of nice. Hold on. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I like that. It's very calming. I feel like I'm in a very calm state of mind listening to this music. I don't think anything can take me out of- AH! Shit! You unfortunately can't dismember this thing like you can the one statue that you find in Dead Space 2. like a rocket in his stomach. Why does it have to look like that, is what I want to know. That is a very unappealing shape for this candy bar to have. Ultra V. More than replacement eyes. That looks kind of dope. Salvation is near. Service, 1 o'clock. Is this a unitologist church or something? Oh shit, two for one? Lemon gun. Girls for you. Perfection. Love hotels. Oh, so we're in the fun part of the city. O lounge. Sensual massage. We got a little. What do we got here? Meteor balls. Soy sticks. Egg nuggets. <laughs> Something about egg nuggets. Jesus Christ. Lunar Times. LMX, the Playboy Genius. Made of cheese burger. What's that sound? Oh shit. Oh fuck. Ah, beans. Bro, we got slashers. Nope. Nope. I want everybody to, like, really enjoy, like, how 
gross and wet these enemies are. Because at a certain point, um, the aesthetic of the enemies really changes. Buy, sell, paw. Buy, buy and sell paws? Oh yeah, Midnight Sun, a massive explosion of taste. Tools of Terror, Caleb Mendoza. Oh shit! Oh, Tentacle Boy! Fuck you. We are ideas. Egov. They steal ideas, is what it is. Got regular sun. Regular flavor sun. Hey, somebody dying over there? Fuck you. Oh shit! Nuggets. <laughs> Hello, Ion Agenda. Welcome to the Shark Stream. Good to see you. Glad you're here. Hope you're doing well. Oh, fuck me. Stop. What is that noise? Hello? Damn it. No trains. What are you talking about? There's one right there. Okay. I made it to the train station. What about Danix men? I lost some of the panic. This outbreak may buy us some time. Well, grab a train. Let's go. No good. Looks like the train was getting refitted with a new power car. So? I'm gonna have to put it back together. We'll do it fast. Danix gunships are far off. We'll try to draw them away then. Be fast. So we gotta literally grab a train. train Get it? It's gotta use kinesis. You may not realize it, but that joke is very funny. The engine is in position. Please attach fuel car before initiating departure sequence. Alright. we go. So here's something that I didn't notice until um, playing through this, having played through this like a few dozen times. Um, Unitologists will actually start cutting through these doors uh, to sort of like push you to like, hey, you gotta get on the train, you gotta get on the train right fucking now. Always on board for train puns. Ah! I get it. Oh, yep, there they go. Alright, we gotta, we gotta, oh, oh, jeez, we gotta leave. You still haven't told me what happened to Ellie. Now it's not the best time, I think. Is she alive? Last I saw her was a keyhole station. Said she was onto something big, shocked out to some secret coordinates, and then we lost contact. I know your ex-girlfriend very well, she's still alive, and... I don't like the way you emphasized ex-girlfriend, buddy. Keyhole Station is actually pretty important in terms of uh, John Carver's backstory, which again, we'll we'll get to when we uh, start up episode Carver. Uh, once I played the game once. Oh, also we have a crouch in this game, so like we can take cover. It's not like full-on cover shooter, but. Which ship is the Yodora? The bigger one. That just flew over your head. Oh, yo. Hit him again, hit him again. hi ya hee hee ha What the fuck was that subtitle? Come on, one more, one more, one more. Hit him again. Okay, they're, they're gonna make me, they're gonna make me progress. Fine. Oh shit, they did. Guess what, zap! Get zapped, idiots. How does several thousand volts feel? Oop. Oh, well, okay. Oh shit! You startled me. Don't do that. 
Alright. Uh, what's next? What's next? Who's it? Oh. No, oh, dropship incoming. Is it gonna? Is the dropship gonna drop anybody? Where are we dropping, boys? Oh, there they are. Pew pew. Get fucked. Oh, we gotta get off this train. Oh, we gotta get off this train. Oh, we gotta go. Oh shit. I'm, I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. I'm awake. Hey, bro. Who's that? A boy. Cute kid. You leave him behind. He's dead. His dad had killed him. And his mother. But we're Sorry. not gonna talk about that yet. We're not friends. Well, thanks for the rescue back there. Try harder next time. Garver, I think we get. Yeah. Good, we're almost there. Get your asses to the bridge. You Something that you'll see a lot of people talk about is how Dead Space 3 was um, essentially tuned for co-op. Uh, and that's not just uh, in terms of... Why, do I, why am I tagged in something on... Hold on. <laughs> okay, what was I talking about? Oh yeah. Um, and that's true both in terms of, like, gameplay, but also its narrative. See, as I mentioned, this is John Carver. He is the co-op character. Um, you'll notice during that scene, he was talking about, like, oh, that's it's my son, he's dead, Dana killed him and his mom, blah, 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 blah. Um... And... If you're playing single player, like I am going to be, at least for this particular run, that never really comes up again. It's never discussed. He's just like, yeah, they're dead. Whatever. And then by the end of the game, he's like your best fucking friend. <laughs> and it's weird. It's actually kind of super weird, admittedly. Um, but if you're playing co-op, there are specific lines of dialogue, events, there are co-op, like, mission, side missions that you go on that explores more of Carver's past. Um, so the relationship between Isaac and Carver is entirely different if you're playing it on co-op, but hits all of the same narrative beats despite that, even if you're playing single player. Hello, G Man Blue. Hey, Welcome to Shark Stream. On patrol. Make this quick, all right? It's his birthday. Ah, shit. Is that Dad? Thanks for the present, Dad. When are you coming home? Soon. Okay. I love you, Dad. Who wants to play soldiers? You gave him a soldier. John, he idolizes you. Well, you better get that idea out of his head. You got that? I gotta go. Love you. John Carver may himself be a soldier, but props to him being like, no son of mine is going to be a soldier. No son of mine is going to be some kind of fucking boot boy. Are we in chapter 2 yet? I forget. We are in chapter 2, so I think this is what we just heard? Recorded message playback. Hey, look. Yeah, 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 it is what we heard. Um, so in this, we would normally find an EarthGov artifact. Officer's log, Captain Robert Norton. Clark hasn't exactly made himself easy to find, and I can't say I blame him. He's been on the run from EarthGov since he escaped Titan Station with those marker secrets stuck in his head. If it weren't for Ellie's help, we wouldn't have known where to look. We set course for New Horizons Lunar Colony this morning. Now the trick is to find him before Danik does. He'd better be worth it. I like to think I'm worth it. I have a pretty high opinion of myself. So chapter two is called... On Your Own. Bro. Alright. <laughs> 
So we're now on the Eudora. This is probably the cleanest environment I've ever fucking seen in a Dead Space game. <laughs> like, this is actually genuinely nice. Also, we get a look at... So, the, the faster than life travel... Faster than life... Faster than light travel in the Dead Space universe is called um, shock point travel. Days ago, Agent Ellie Langford and her team attempted a blind shock to an uncharted planet. She believes it holds the secret to stopping this marker epidemic, but we've been unable to make contact. Our number one priority is finding and securing Agent Langford and her team. This is the same sort of thing as like hyperspace of like, um, whatever they fucking call it in Halo. Um, slip space. It's slip space in Halo. Warhammer be like, let's take a shortcut through hell. Warhammer be like, orc believe faster than light travel possible, so faster than light travel possible. Orc believe ship will hold up during faster than light travel, so ship will hold up during faster than light travel. As I understand it, at least. I don't know shit nor fuck about Warcraft other than that. Also, hello, Nero Wolf. Welcome to the Shark Stream. Uh, anyways, this is what Shock Space looks like. It's very pretty. Like, look at that. That's nice. I like that. It's calming, almost. You could put, like, a three-hour recording of this up on YouTube just as... Just be like, calming slip space view, or shock space view, dead space 3, and like, it would probably put that on. I'd put that on. Orcs have windows on their stars just because they believe they can breathe in outer space. <laughs> Good for them. Uh, I think this, I think at the end of this hallway at this point in the, uh, in the chapters where you would normally find the EarthGov artifact, but right now there's just... There's just stuff over here. Scrap metal. Scrap metal is part of the uh, crafting system. That's very pretty. That is very pretty. I like this. It's pretty. I enjoy pretty things. Why do they have windows? Because it enables them to drive by shooting. Love that for them. Okay, let's go see what Norton wants. Here's a bridge full of characters I'm sure I'll get to know and love. 15 seconds to target. Standing by to de -shot. That's a joke. Most of them we won't get to know. One of them we definitely will never love at any point. Norton sucks. We haven't seen why he sucks like yet. But believe me, we'll get to it. Oh shit. I see it. Christ. This place is a junkyard. More like a You're a junkyard. Any sign of Ellie's ship? I'm reading several transponders, but none of them are ours. According to the registry, they're sovereign colonies warships. Are you serious? They'd be over 200 years old. Wait, wait. I'm getting That is literally not the weirdest thing that's happened today, my guy. Why the fuck would you name a ship after the goddamn Roanoke? The goddamn Roanoke. Roanoke Island is what I meant. Roanoke calling. Why would you name a ship after that? That's asking for trouble. Like, fuck. Goddamn. That's like the people in Sunshine with like, oh, we're, we've got this ship that we're going to use to drop a nuke into the sun. So we need to fly really close to the sun. What should we call our ship? Let's call it the Icarus. That's a good idea. It's fucking goddamn. I believe that the blue color is lucky, so that's why ultramarine space, ultramarine space marines can't ever be defeated by them. That's hilarious. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of Thanos' stated weakness in Marvel Comics, and I'll get into that in a moment. 
because this section of the game actually kind of demands my attention a little bit. Carver! Now we gotta go down this hallway legit. All these fucking mines are exploding all over the place. Oh. Oh no. The gravity. Oh fuck. Oh. <laughs> Gravity's broken. Gravity machine broke. <laughs> yeah, Isaac, fly into the fucking space minefield. Now, to be fair, wasn't Isaac's call to fly into the space minefield. And also, they didn't realize the mines were there until it was too late. Oh shit, oh fuck, oh beans. Quick, Isaac, breathe the air in as it's rushing past you. That's how that works, right? Oh fuck my helmet. Go, 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 get it, 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 Okay. We're good. We're good. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Nothing bad is happening right now. I can see the room. Rosen, lock, brace yourselves. Once I release the clamps, it's gonna blow us clear of the Adora. Everyone find something to hang on to. Haha, <laughs> funny push button. Oh shit. Gravity, I barely know her. Yeah, I see him. There's a couple really cool, like, spaceflight moments like I'm this coming. in this game. Just hang on. I also really like this game's soundtrack. It's very, it's very nice, and just like part of like me using this game as like a uh, sort of like I don't know what to play so I'll play Dead Space 3 means that I have a lot of affinity for this particular uh, soundtrack. This can only work perfectly! In all the wisdom of people in Dead Space, they couldn't design a fucking okay. space mine detector. I'm sure they do. They probably Jesus. don't have a space mine detector that detects again. mines from 200 years ago. To be dark? fair. Yeah. Yeah, you think there's air on board? Ellie's SOS is coming from somewhere inside, so let's hope so. So the EVA suit um, has two modes. There's the mode that it's in right now uh, that has, like, the solar shielding uh, on the face. Uh, and then there's the mode that removes the solar shielding once we're inside that looks a little bit more dead spacey. Right now it kind of looks like a Halo outfit. So here we are at the CMS Roanoke. Um, again, very poor choice of name. Um, so this is the front half of Dead Space 3 where we are going to spend a fair bit of time in uh, essentially this graveyard for ships, right? Simple fucking radar could do that. Nothing in Dead Space is simple. Motherfuckers don't even got OSHA anymore. Let's be real. Their attitude towards mine detection is probably just like... Just, ah, just do your best. But look out. Well, watch out. <laughs> we believe in you. Oh, looks like the power's out everywhere. There's no way to activate the cargo doors. I think there's a manual crank on the other door. See it? Right. I'll see if I can get inside. Bunk. Okay. But yeah, I like this environment. It's really cool and it's really pretty to look at. Dead Space 3 has a lot of really pretty vistas. Like, I'm gonna go ahead and give it that. There's a lot that this game can be criticized for, but like, who golly, it is a good looking game. 
let me tell you. Well, you've got air. <laughs> Dust. Any sign of Ellie? No. Looks like Let's I'm be real. A shark wearing a biohazard sign on his chest plate would say, pet it to I'm them. To open the cargo doors. Hang on. Yeah, this is my pet mine. He's real friendly. Don't worry, he doesn't bite. <laughs> oh, that's... That's comforting. All is lost. Ah, Alice lost! Some sort of ancient writing from 200 years ago. What could it mean? Who is Alice? <laughs> Was she a was she a passenger? Was she an engineer? <laughs> Still gonna wear thick gloves. Open the door. It's getting hard to breathe. How much longer? Yeah, we're working as fast as we can. Mark's really pale. I can't stop the bleeding. Yeah, take Isaac. Okay, meet me at the door. I can let you in from this side. All right, there. Now get in here. Give me a hand. All right. Why is the door? Okay, there we go. Hello, Venom Lad. Oh, I can criticize this game to hell and back, but I'd have to start charging after the first Isaac, ten minutes. Fair enough. The SOS is coming from deeper inside this ship, but I can't leave Rosen in lock. Send me the coordinates. I'll go check it out. Here you go. Hey, don't stray too far. That's an order. No promises. I need to find a place where I can change my outfit. Hi, Carver. Hi, Carver. Hi. Hi, hi, Carver. Hi, Carver. Hi. Carver, I'm gonna play as you at the end of this run. Okay, bye. Love you. It's also just me being a little shit. Like I said, fair. Oh, human remains. Wonderful. That's a good sign that they just got. Coffins lying out in the open. Space coffins, even. So this game also has autosave. We don't have save stations anymore. Um, this means that the hardcore mode for this game is slightly different than it was for Dead Space 2. Hardcore, hardcore mode in Dead Space 2 gives you a total of three game saves you can make over the course of your playthrough. Um, in hardcore mode for Dead Space 3, uh, you still keep your um, standard uh, auto saves, um, so you can like stop playing and start playing at any and start playing again at any point. But if you die, it's permadeath. That being said, uh, a trick that I use in order to finish hardcore mode is that I saved the game in two places, um, and then if I ever died. I would delete the save where I died and replace it with the save where I didn't, and then continue again. It's a dead end. Looks like someone shut a bulkhead for quarantine. That's a good sign. Can we cut through it? No. It's too thick. But it might cycle Ooh, open if I power it up. Thick. Too thick to cut. With two C's. Or possibly two Q's. Human remains, you you mean alien food? Get, get in there. Get, get, get. There we go. That did it. And there's a bench on the same circuit. Bench? With all the parts lying around here, I bet I can make a better weapon than this one. Yeah, yeah, smart thinking. This is probably one of the best weapons you're gonna get, Isaac. Is the fucking plasma cutter. It is consistently one of the most useful weapons in this entire fucking universe. So this is a bench. This is where you do the the guncraft. World of guncraft. So, guncrafting. Let's fucking talk about it. Pretty good, actually. You can make some pretty cool stuff. Um... So like there there's like some basic stuff that you can get. You can get you can like make a revolver, you can make a your a force gun, you can make a line gun. Um you've also got like some special guns that you can construct using um 
like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Fucking blueprints. Revolver sold, partner. Yeah, you can just you can just have a revolver against the necromorph hordes. I have a line gun with a rotator cuff module. It's basically just a big plasma cutter. Here's one that's both a plasma cutter that also shoots saw blades. This one is a revolver with a bayonet on it. Like, it's it's pretty neat, actually. So, we're gonna, like... And here's some of the blueprints that we've got. So, this is listed as a team favorite. It's a stasis, amplified, chain gun, and force gun. Modified to slow enemies down with each shot. We'll use scavenge parts. So, you shoot enemies, they slow down while you're doing it. So that you can hit them with more shot. With enough thinking, you can make a plasma cutter galling gun. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think with the way that this game is structured, you can do that. But it's a cool idea. Here's the shoot banger. <laughs> and tubes. Some of these have... Um, essentially like bonuses if you're playing on co-op that like give more damage to both you and your partner but yeah there's some cool stuff here tray pound seven And then, of course, you've got some of, like, the kind of basic, uh, dead space weapons, like the contact beam or the force gun, in addition to some of the wilder ones. Here's the Hun E1 Badger, an advanced rivet shotgun and hydraulic eviscerator modified for flame damage and ammo conservation. <laughs> javelin gun, a medic support handgun. This is the this is the one that I tend to use, the Mjolnir. Got pulse rifle. You got your basic shotgun, the show stopper. Galvanizer and cryogenic torch modified with two stasis attachments. Seeker rifle. I think this is What did I fucking do here? I put a fucking ripper blades on a goddamn rotator cuff. That's right. I apparently made, like, upgraded versions of the Devil Horns. But yeah, there's some cool stuff. There's some cool stuff that you can do with this. Now, there's a goddamn fucking side quest for, like, crafting a weapon that's going to stay there if we don't just fucking do something about it. So I'm just gonna... Okay. Yeah, let's not do a military engine. Let's do Tesla core. No parts available to craft. Okay. How about a pneumatic torch? Conic dispersal. Done. We're not going to use it, of course, because I have way better weapons to use, but now it'll say that that side quest was completed. See? Anyways, the people inside that uh, room are dying, so I should probably, you know, turn the air on. What was that noise? It's 
Probably just the wind. Ah, fuck. So this is going to be our main enemy aesthetic through most of the game, is these, like, sort of dusty, decrepit-looking uh, necromorphs. Hey, guys. We're in trouble. What is it? What's going on? I just got jumped by what's left of the crew. What? No one could have survived out here that long. They didn't survive. They got turned into those things. What? Okay. What do we do? You keep your weapon ready and you stay the hell away from the ventilation ducts. If they get close, shoot for the lips. You got that? I said you got that! Yeah, yeah, okay, okay! Norton is also kind of fed up with how many times this game series tends to hammer it home that you have to shoot them in the limbs. Necrosis sure didn't do them well, and it sure didn't. But yeah, that's going to kind of be, like, the aesthetic at least until we get down to the planet, I think. Because once we get down to the planet, I think the aesthetic is slightly different because, uh... The cold has kept them from... decomposing, essentially. Whoa! Nice try. Oh, get a load of this dude. Fuck you. Also, why is the shark bearing a big biohazard sign on his chest plate? Because that is my boy, Acid Shark. He's a biohazard. Should I be worried? Well, I mean, all of my bodily fluids are acidic, to varying degrees and therefore corrosive. So, maybe? It depends on how close you get. Ooh, they wiggling. Little wiggly boys. You know what they remind me of? They remind me, you know how in Metroid Fusion, like the key hunters, you see them over their, basically their entire sort of life cycle? They remind me of the point where you can find them, like, pupating, not, not like in their cocoons, but like you can see them like just about to burst out and they're like wriggling. That's what they remind me of. Fuck you. If it isn't the acid that can dissolve gold, I can manage. <laughs> I'll never tell. They want to go that way. How soon can I get, like, a suit, a new suit? I think we have to find Ellie first before we can uh, change our suit. Who said that? Ah, shit. No. That's the pneumatic hammer, by the way. <laughs> It's, it's a lot of fun. Now the weapon crafting means that there aren't really like... Fire! Fire! I... Where the hell are you? Almost to the crossover too. Let's give it a moment. Make a barricade. Just keep them out a little longer. But it means that there really isn't like a shop system. So you no longer find like um uh like the semiconductors, for example. You'll find like boxes if you do like cool stuff or like side quests, you'll find like boxes of like pieces and like Gun parts and things like that. Uh, crafting resources. Uh, there's still Pang. There's always Pang. But Pang no longer gives you cash money. Uh, Pang now gives you more crafting resources. Also, these are no longer little babies. 
They are now Widow Dogies. Because I guess they had Dogies on ship. Somebody, somebody really wanted some puppers. They really wanted some heckin' puppers on board. So now we gotta bust these borks. Laughs and socialism. <laughs> We're working on the barter system. You ever think about how money is just kind of like a deferred barter system? It's just like, I'm giving you this piece of paper that will guarantee that you can then get a service later on. And it's just all the way down the chain. Norton, you there? Yeah. I think yeah, about that I'm sometimes. Here. I think we're on chapter right, three. Are we on chapter three? We're on chapter three. The SOS is coming from directly above me. And it looks like I found the ship's primary generator. If I can get power going, it should unlock the crossover for you. All right, what about you? Uh, there's an elevator here that goes straight up the spire. I'll meet you at Ellie's coordinates. I'm not a fan of Isaac's, uh... poofy astronaut suit. I think the suit that he... The default suit that he gets later on when you get down to the surface of uh, Tau Valenti um, is better, but I also have my preferences for some of the uh, downloadable content suits. Anyways, chapter three is the Roanoke. So we're up to Brat for folks keeping track at home. All right, uh, so we need to get this generator up and running. Let's just... Something's horrible is about to attack me. Oh, no, it's this guy. Whoop. Stop that. Don't do that. Don't do that! Whoop! Ow! Oh, shit! Oh, shit, the pants! All right, we're all right. We're good. It's fine. Don't worry about it. One of the cool little unintended benefits of the arc lightning uh, weapon is letting you know where other enemies are. I have had it happen before where I've hit somebody with the arc lightning gun and the arc has shot behind me, indicating that like, hey, somebody's fucking sneaking up on you, idiot. I shouldn't say that about myself. I'm not an idiot. I'm very smart and good at video games. And super sexy. Let's get this shit turned on. Whoop. See, that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes I ask myself why the fuck I st I, am I still awake in the middle of the night, and then I go back to Twitch remembering it's Sunday tomorrow. Hell yeah. Alright, we did it! We have turned on the genera- oh shit! Fucker. We hey, turned on the generator. The crossover just opened up. You're welcome. Rosen, lock, you stay put. Isaac Carver will rendezvous with the fire. Got it. You're welcome. Like, Isaac, come on, man. At this point in the story, Norton hasn't even been a shithead to you yet. Not really. Outside of, like, maybe stressing ex-girlfriend. Or rather, today. It'd be like that sometimes. I still need to get up early tomorrow, because I have to drive my wife to work. But I can, at the very least, get me a coffee. God, it's been so long since I've had a good coffee. I've been in, I've I've been avoiding going to the coffee place that I really like because I've been super low on funds. If you want to help me buy a coffee tomorrow, you can click the donate link just below the stream. If we hit hundred and fifty dollars, I will stream Sonic Boom: Rise of Lyric. Oh, hey, there's Ellie.
Ellie sucks in this game. Like, it's unfortunate. They really fucked her up for this. Is this him? Oh, uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's him. I say Clark. Oh, hey, man. Austin Buckle. Marker Ops. This here is Jennifer Santos. Our little lady with the big brain. If it's true you can decipher the marker script, this mission might still have a chance. Isaac, thank you for coming. Like I had a choice. I know, I'm sorry. But I have so much to tell you. It might need to wait. No, not yet. Isaac, we need to stop the marker. The trail ends at the Admiral's quarters. She'd written marker scroll all over the walls. The answers are in there. I know it. We cannot leave until we know what it says. Yeah, well, then let Isaac handle the translating. We're leaving now. I got Buckle, you get Santos. Let's go. Like, everything about Ellie in this game is just, like... Like, I don't know how to... I don't know how else to explain it. They bimbofied Ellie for this game. EA pointed the fucking bimbofication beam at the best character from Dead Space 2 and was just like, I diagnose you with sexier for some fucking reason. I guess they just decided the series needed more sex appeal. And I mean, like, you could have done that without, like, bimbifying the woman, you know? EA doesn't make sense. No, you're correct. What's in my fucking inventory right now? Oh my god. Alright, we need to move some of these health items over. Okay, my usual spread for this is... Three smalls. Two me mediums and a large. Same with Bethesda. We don't talk about Fallout 76. We might need to talk about Fallout 76. They're still doing stuff with Fallout 76. I have to imagine people are still playing that game. Isaac, I'm sorry about that. There's so much going on. I so Norton, huh? I mean, that was Is this quick. really when we want to have this particular conversation? Damn right. I never gave up on you. Oh no. You gave up on the world. I paid my dues. Or don't you think I'm fucked up enough already? Isaac, this is do or die. We're stuck without your help. This is literally the worst time to be having this conversation. It doesn't look like I have a choice. Now what? I'm still grateful for the modding community of Fallout. Oh, well, things in here are doing poorly. Let's get this turned back on. It's tentacle time, everybody. Get ready for fun. Real tentacle hours begin now. Something's coming up on me. Something's coming up on me. Something's coming up on me. Ah! Oh shit. Oh fuck. We're good. We're good. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Everything is okay. Nothing. Everything is. This is all happening as intended. Something is about to fucking eat my goddamn collarbone. Oh shit. We need to leave. We need to go. We need to- I need to- I just- I- ah! You can't touch me. You can't touch me. Ooh. Fucking <laughs> touching the ladder and calling base. Use your goddamn acid. I don't have any acid damage weapons right now. This isn't fucking Nick Arcade. I can't just jump into the video game and, like, 
wave my arms around in the general direction of a necromorph because I don't know exactly where they are on the green screen behind me. Because all I have to work off of is, like, a, a TV that I can kind of see from where I'm standing. I hope everybody has enjoyed this reference to Nick Arcade. It was a little wordy. I'll secure here. How the others still live. I'll meet you oh, at the hold on. Where's the fucking door? Here we go. Leave me waiting. Crew access or craxess. Oh shit. Ah, beans. Anyone else? Anybody? Beans? Where? Don't worry about it. Everywhere, really. One could say we are all full of beans. So this is normally a co-op thing, where, like, each one of you controls, like, one of these, uh, funny little cursors. Uh, but in single-player mode, you just control both of them with the left and right sticks. Any second now. This helmet is also too circular. I don't know. I don't know. Like the shape. The shape bothers me. It just looks like I'm wearing big poofy pajamas. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Oh my god. So in co-op mode, who's the second person control? John Carver, uh, who you will be seeing in a moment. This guy. Isaac. Hey, Isaac. Isaac. Oh, Carver, what's going on? Oh, Isaac. Hey. Turn it. Hey. What is it? What's going on? Nothing. Nothing. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Oh, Ellie. The admiral was obsessed with making a key. A key to what? Hey. A key to what? Some sort of alien device. A machine. I think that she believed that it controlled the markers. Oh my god. She wanted to turn it off. She wrote that over and over again like a mantra. Or instructions. This is exactly what we've been looking for. This isn't just some random planet, Isaac. They found the source. The marker homeworld. Yes, that's exactly what it is. There's nothing else it could possibly be. Definitely. One hundred percent. Control room. We can plan our next move from there. Clark, shake it off. Let's go. Clark. But yeah, if you're doing co-op and you're playing as Carver, it is an entirely different game, actually. Are we on chapter four? We are on chapter four. Oh shit. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I keep missing like these chapter uh transitions. Chapter 4 is History's Ember. Uh, broth? What the fuck? Or, you hold... <laughs> yeah, you can read that, right? Broth. There we go. <laughs> anyway. Damn it, Marjorie. I'm risking a lot of brave men and women down in that ice cube. Soldiers that could be fighting the war back home. Now, can somebody tell me, for the love of God, what the hell we're looking for? We are looking for hope, General. Oh, good God in heaven. Support for the war and our ability to fight it are dwindling. We are out of resources, we are out of public approval, and we are out of time. Just answer my question. What are we looking for? Markers. You must be joking. The scented kind. Preferably cherry. Get that black liquor shit out of my face. To to give you a full briefing. You must be out of your goddamn General. You are dismissed. 
Okay, I don't think we uh, indulged in the artifacts that we could find in Chapter 3. So Chapter 3 is, we, is where we start finding scaff artifacts, I believe. Oh, no, uh, the prologue is. We missed this one in the prologue. From Dr. Earl Serrano to Ensign Patrick Beckford, subject special cargo. I cannot stress enough how important it is that your cargo reaches its intended destination. Should you fail in your mission, it is not just our lives that are at stake, but those of your wives, your children, everyone you could have ever known. I pray the Codex finds its way safely to my hands before it's too late. Godspeed. So he sent this to whoever was flying that ship we found crashed in the prologue, basically. Uh, chapter 3, Scaff Artifact 02. From Admiral Marjorie Graves to CMS Roanoke, all hands. I'd like to thank each and every crew member for taking part in this historic expedition. Never ha has there been a more worthy cause, nor more dire circumstances than those we face today. While most of you aren't cleared to view the full details of this mission, know this. Our hopes and dreams for a future are at stake. The fate of the colonies rests in your capable hands. Official orders. SCAF ISC 31294 CMS Roanoke. Notice to all officers effective immediately. Admiral Marjorie Graves is confined to quarters till further notice. Post a guard around the clock to monitor her activities. Under no circumstances is anyone to talk to her. Fleet command now rests with me. Reroute all channel all requests through planetside channels. Major General Spencer Mahad, SCAF MPI 09041592 shit. Yeah, he seemed like a fucking crackerjack kind of guy based on his singular appearance in the prologue. Attention General S. Mahad from Captain A. Belknap. Uh, my apologies for the excessive noise, sir, but there's not much I can do short of sedating the entire canine unit. The dogs began acting up the moment we went into orbit. Several have tried to claw their way out of their cages, ripping their paws apart in the process. I'd like to request sending them down to the planet sooner rather than later. It would be good for them to stretch their legs. Dogs are a lot like people, and being cooped up for so long would make anyone stir-crazy. So they just, they just had a shitload of dogs. Alright, alien artifact is where we, is what we can start finding in chapter four. Personal log, Laura Engstrom. The frozen specimens are breathtaking. Their physiology isn't entirely dissimilar to our own in the broadest sense. They are large, almost majestic in a way. Their crested heads are both horrifying and beautiful. Dr. Serrano suspects there may be millions of them down there trapped in the ice amidst the markers. Who were these noble creators? Why did they build the markers? Are they responsible for placing the black marker on Earth? For what reason? I believe we will find all of these answers and more on this frozen planet. Officer's Log, Captain J. Suzuki. We, I had a nice conversation with Dr. Kiroga in the mess. He seems to be completely over his zero-g sickness and is settling in comfortably. When I asked him about the rocks his team is studying, his face lit up. Markers, he corrected me, not rocks. He went on to tell me in great detail as many theories about the frozen planet, the marker creators, and some sort of plan for all of us. It's refreshing to see people so interested in their work. If we didn't have something to keep our minds engaged out here, we'd probably all end up killing each other. Wouldn't that be wild? If that happened... Uh, personal log, Laura Engstrom. When the Sovereign Colonies signed me on to this project, I was led to believe we would be given free reign of the site, access, and resources. It's anything but. Mahad's men are thick as molasses, stationed at practically every airlock, asking for badges and IDs and research tickets every step of the way. I can't tell if they're obstructionist on purpose or by accident, but either way, I'll have a word with Mahad, or several. Despite this, despite all this, we haven't been rendered entirely useless. Today we got a look at one of the specimens brought up from the planet. We've confirmed it is indeed organic life trapped in the ice. Early test suggests suggest is had been there for possibly millions of years tomorrow we will dissect the specimen and i understand and there are many many more where that came from so this is basically um kind of confirming early on something that we'll find out later is that we're going to start seeing like alien uh life forms uh private transmission from lcdrs kettle cms terra nova to captain a belknap cms roanoke if this expedition if this is supposed to be an archaeological expedition, why do we have a fully armed battleship watching our every move? All it does is troll the flotilla, occasionally shining its lights across the halls of other ships. It's creepy. And if I'm not mistaken, it's a mine warfare vessel. Judging by the size of the payload, there must be hundreds of thousands of space mines on board. With that many mines, you could take out a flotilla the size of ours a few times over. I might go ahead and save the rest of these until we hit Chapter 5, just in the event that, like... Maybe some of them are important for understanding some other stuff. 
If we can get it spaceworthy again, we can use it to reach the planet's surface. No chance. We find the shuttle, then we're getting the hell out of here. Damn it, Robert. If we don't stop the markers, there won't be anything to go back to. Either way, it looks like the shuttle's our only shot. Where is it? In the biggest ship of the fleet. The Terra Nova. The Terra Nova. Well, they must have had some way to travel between ships. If there's a way, we'll find it. I don't know, this guy seems like the kind of dude who would probably pronounce it Terra Nova. Terra Nova. Okay, I think we're coming up on finally being able to, like, change our outfit. Which will be nice. Good afternoon, General. Admiral Graves asked me to prepare this information for you. Oh, hey. <clears throat> when I the black the marker was exhumed on the Earth in 2214... That's what it, it looked like. ...it our understanding of science. It appeared to generate limitless energy, a trait of obvious importance in our resource-strapped times. There was an effort to replicate the marker, hoping to understand its technology, thereby acquiring limitless energy for ourselves. You can see Aegis 7 on there. When we learned they are not sources I think one of the other planets that are listed might be the one that the second novel takes place on, but I'm not too sure. Deep in space. Triangulating this marker signal revealed a previously undetected planet, now known as Tau Volantis. We hope to find the source of this signal and finally harness the energy for ourselves. And if this works, it could mean a better future for all of us. General, thank you for your time. Good afternoon, General. Admiral Graves asked okay. to prepare this Let's go ahead and... for you. Fuck off on out of here. When the black marker was exhumed on the earth in 2214, it did Oh! Ah! Blah! 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 Ah! Stop it! Oh shit! Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. Ain't that just the way? Alright, uh, where are we headed? We're headed this way. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Repair bay. It's kind of wild to think that, like, the first Dead Space game had, like, a map. And... None of the Dead Space games since then have had maps. Twenty-sixth century society has evolved beyond the need for maps. Everyone just instinctively knows where we're going. It also helps that we've got this thing. <laughs> Everyone has one of those. It, it came with your fucking rig. You have an objective marker. Where is everyone? Finding a way off this wreck. Santos, tell him what we found. Of course. We found a little maintenance craft. A skip. It doesn't go very far or very fast, but it will take you to the outcome of ships. Here, I'm sending you the coordinates. Thanks, man. Yeah, let's get the shuttle so we can head home already. Robert, we are not going home. Hey, hey. We'll get the shuttle first and decide what to do with it. I'm heading out to take a look at this. Skip. I bet Isaac is really relishing the chance to, like, be the voice of reason after having to fucking deal with Norton's shit. What you doing, Ellie? How's, how's, how's things going? He's just like, hey, guys, come on. Let's, uh, let's all calm down just a little bit here. Oh, thank fuck. So generally, the way that I tend to play this game is that for uh, this first, this like front half of the game, I will generally use the N7 suit, which is the uh, Mass Effect crossover suit. The N7 suit is inspired by the hero Shepard from popular 21st century Earth fiction, distributed by Cosplay Intergalactic Incorporated. It's, it's, it's kind of funny. It's just, it's essentially cosplay. Popular 21st century fiction. I mean, yeah, people still like Mass Effect, generally speaking. 
Maybe not as much as they once did. Maybe not as much as they did when this game came out. Um, it's basically, uh, the N7 suit is based off of, uh, the design is essentially the security suits from Dead Space 2, so it's got more of a Dead Space 2 look to it, that generally I prefer. Oh. Isaac, Norton here. Are you contacting me on a private channel? Because I need to know if you're on my side. We're taking sides now? I know you two had a thing. But she's mine now, and Why do you I look like a weird cat man, man Norton? If she's right, and this is the mark of home rule, maybe there's a chance of stopping this. <laughs> Whoa! Eye on agenda, if thank you for the follow! Appreciate that. Appreciate you. Hey, I get it. You think you Hope you enjoy your time here. Yeah, look, we'll forget it. She's over it, alright? <laughs> oh, that appeared right over Norton's face. I would rather look at one of my cats than look at Norton's face. Where are my cats? I don't think any of them are in here. Oh no, Raggy's here! Hello, Raggy! How are you? Oh, you're all curled up, just lying on the floor, huh? I'm gonna give you scratches. Wugga, wugga, wugga. Wiggling you around. What are you gonna do about it? You're not gonna do nothing. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're just gonna sit there. You're just gonna get wiggled. I love you. Sorry, I got distracted by Cat. Also, I really wish they fleshed out Norton more because, as is, he's just an annoying little pleb. That's true. But I do like having somebody that I can just absolutely fucking hate. Like, it's a lot of fun. Just being like, ugh, fucking Norton. Fucking hate that guy. Fuck him. It's nice to have a character that you don't feel bad when something bad happens to them. Sip. Out of my way. Transmission. Oh. Do you guys hear this? My rig's picking up some kind of looping message. It sounds encrypted. It's coming from the research vessel CMS Greeley. This could be really important. If I get a chance, I'll check into it, Santos. Isaac out. So the CMS Greeley mission is um, one of the first of the more involved side quests in the game. None of them are particularly important, but I do know that the CMS Greeley one uh, hints at some stuff that you end up you end up uh, doing later in the game. Oh, Raggy has jumped up onto the chair with me. Hello, Raggy. How are you? What's up? Can I help you? Hello. Oh. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Boy, son, son, boy, son, boy, boy, son. Boy, son, Barry. What's up? Oh, careful! Don't don't sit on my don't sit on my cord here. Oh, it's looped around your leg, actually. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let's. Uh, 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 there you go. Now you can sit down. <laughs> there you go. He's sitting in my lap. Rag, my cat Ragnarok usually isn't a lap cat, but like sometimes, sometimes he likes to be pampered. Where's your brush? Do I have your brush around here? Or is that like... Oh, it's over on the dresser. Darn. Okay, let's get inside this so I don't have to worry about, like, running out of air. I had to get you new food yesterday, and it cost me $45 because we have to start feeding y'all the fancy stuff because of your sister's sensitive tummy. Not that it's helped too much in that regard. She's still kind of thrown up every so often. The poor thing. I think she just eats too fast, honestly. I don't think it's allergies. Oh, you like getting scratched right there. You like getting scratched right there. Look at you. The decadence. Sorry, I need to bring the streams to a screeching halt while I pet my cat. <laughs> I hope everybody understands. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, let's see. We've been going for about two hours. Um, probably going to end up doing the uh, Greeley side quest. And then uh, from there, probably moving on to like the next step of the main quest line. Listen to me talk about like I'm talking about a fucking RPG. Uh, and then probably call it for the night. Ragnarok. You're disrupting the stream, but I don't really care, cause you're just so cute. Ragnarok, he gets scritch on the head. Yeah, you like that, don't you? What if I also got you under the chin, huh? Oh, the decadence. Oh, living life. Loving it. Squisha you face. Alright, let's go to the Greeley. Oh, what? Are you upset that I, I stopped petting you? Reminder that if you subscribe here on the Shark Stream, uh, you can get emotes of my cats. Including, but not limited to, Pognarok. It's a good emote, honestly. Oh, I love you too. I have to continue playing the video game, okay? Can you be a good boy for me and not completely disrupt me at every turn? Oh, nope, you're going to go ahead and get up then? What's up? What's up? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Where are you going? Ragnarok, what is your wisdom? Okay, rubbing your face on my chair. Okay. I see. Rubbing your butt on the Wii U gamepad. Okay. That's fine. I'm not using that for anything right now. I'll just need to disinfect it at some point. So, thanks for that. Where are you going? What is it? Whoa, you're slipping. You're slipping. You're slipping, boyo. So there's another um, ship in uh, the graveyard that um, is essentially, I want to say, just like pretty much a carbon copy of the Greeley. But the main difference is, Ragnarok, you're being disruptive. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to body slam you. I'm sorry. Pick you up. Put you down. I'm pretty sure it's just a carbon copy of the Greeley in terms of its layout. But what's most important about it is that it is the site not of... Oh, I need to, like... Hold on. It is the site of the co-op side quest, because there are specific side quests in this game that you can only do co-op. As such, I haven't done them, actually. I've never experienced this game in co-op. When we get to do doing our episode Carver run... That's going to be my first time experiencing the game in a co-op capacity. And especially, specifically, seeing it from Carver's point of view. Which will be interesting. I believe it's also going to be Friend of the Stream and... Um, roommate JB's first time playing through the game. Uh, so they, uh, do plan to, um, stream it on their stream hey, as well. Hey, Santos, I made it inside the Greeley. Any luck with that encrypted message? No, but if you can find the source, maybe we can find a way to decrypt it. Roger that. Isaac out. A friend tried hard to get me to play co-op with him. I partially regret turning him down. I'm super interested in it. Um, not just because I can finally get the co-op, uh, achievements, but also because, like, I just already genuinely like this game, and I'm excited to experience a side of it that I've never gotten the chance to do. Oh, I wanna, I wanna start looking at some of these, hold on. 
Uh, what is this? Personal log, Ellie Langford. The system is extremely remote, beyond even the most distant settlement. It was a terrible risk, shocking and blind as we did, but we had no other choice. If we want any hope of stopping this marker epidemic, we have to follow their signals, we have to find the source. Sandoz has deployed a shock beacon for the Eudora to follow, and we are now headed into a cluster of debris in orbit, possibly the remains of an ancient fleet. As we closed in to investigate, our ship was attacked by automated mines. We jettisoned into the debris field and managed to stow aboard a fairly intact ship, the CMS Roanoke. There's no power, but there is air trapped within these walls. I removed a piece of shrapnel from, buck from Buckle and managed to stabilize his condition. So that's why he's all fucked up when you find him. After setting up a distress beacon, San Santos and I set out to investigate the ship. We soon discovered the Admiral had been locked in her quarters, presumably for going crazy. When we forced open the door to her room, we discovered a complex mapping of this of this former military's expedition. The Admiral knew something about the markers and how they re relate to this planet, but it's all written in marker gibberish. Only one man I know can decipher this. I only hope Robert can find him and follow the shock beacon as planned. If he doesn't, I fear our small group will either starve to death or suffocate, and mankind will go extinct as the markers continue to spread. Damn it, Marjorie. Uh, that's what we find in that fucking... Hold on. Turn it off. It says turn it off in my head. It talks to me, tells me things that no one else can hear. Just for me, just for me. Turn it off, turn it off, turn it off, and it will all go away. It will all stop. Wonderful. Personal journal, Ellie Langford. I wasn't sure how he'd feel seeing me again. He's been through a lot, and I with him for much of it. Before I left, I could tell things were bothering him, but he did what he always does. Suppressed it, kept it locked inside. I asked him when he was going to face demons. He said some things should remain buried. Nothing good comes from digging up the past. It's strangely fitting that we find ourselves together once more in this 200-year-old flotilla doing just that. Oh, we're going to find this one in this particular side mission, I believe. Oh. I don't know. I don't like that. Oh yeah, there he goes. Hey, stop it. Isaac did face his demons. You're just making him face some new bullshit. Santos. That's true. It looks like parts of the ship are sealed off. Sealed? On purpose? Do you think you can get it open? I'm not sure. If I can get the power on, I may be able to lift the security lock down. Hold on. Yeah, that's one of the things about... Um, Isaac at this point in the series is I believe it's established that Isaac hasn't had any wild hallucinations for like a long time like him dealing with uh, Nicole at the end of Dead Space 2 uh, that was it he was done which is why John Carver as a character is kind of important uh, to this game because he's basically what Isaac was. If you play as him, you get hallucinations that Isaac can't see, which is wild to me. I think that's cool as hell. Okay, so we need to go this way. Now, zip is a zip is a web, zip is a bebo, boca de bepo. God, I gotta write something for the new Final Fantasy XIV rights prompt. Day 10 is up and it's channel. And I have no idea what fucking definition of the word channel I'm going to use as inspiration for whatever the hell it is I write. But I am enjoying it. I got to write, um,. A uh, depiction of the origins of Igeald Shork, my Final Fantasy XIV character recently, which is something that I've wanted to do for a while, and this seemed like as good an opportunity as any to do so. That thing looks ominous. Nothing better pop out of that. Power's on. Swear to God. The lockdown is originating from the radio room. Set my waypoint. I'll head there. kind of funny. Um, my wife, Natalie, my lovely, adoring wife, who I love, absolute light of my life, moon and my stars, um, 
it's kind of funny. She, we were talking about, because uh, she's doing Final Fantasy XIV right as well. And um, we were talking about uh, what she had planned to do uh, for it this year. Like she was, oh, hold on. Isaac, how's your progress? I found the radio room. Just give me a minute to release this lockdown. Um, she was talking about, like, what she had planned, uh, for Final Fantasy XIV, right? And, like, prior to the start of the event, she's just like, okay, I'm... I'm, uh... Oh god, what was it? I'm not gonna write so much angsty stuff, I'm not going to write a continuous narrative, and, and just, like, making... And just, like, all these plans that she had for it. And then she has written so much angst, and it is, and thus far, every single prompt has like worked itself really well into just like a full ongoing narrative for the characters she's depicting. And it's all super good. No, not that one. Let's do this one. This one? He seems like he's having a good time. Commander, this is Unit 3. They barricaded themselves in with the broadcasting equipment. If that's where they want to die, let them. Cut the ship's power. It'll kill their life support and cripple the transmission. What about the others? You know the orders. No one lives. Understood. No! Oh, please! You don't understand! You can't! You can't do this! Well, that sucks. Rip to that guy, but I'm different. I'm not from 200 years in the past. <laughs> the fuck is that noise? Oh, shit. Oh, we got some splody boys. Boys with the splody sacks. I hear you. There you are. Ow, fuck. I'm alright. Everything is fine. Nothing is broken. Jojo. Oh shit. Is that a motherfucking Jojo reference? I have my reasons, don't ask. Hmm, purple. I don't like that noise. Who's doing that? Who would? Fuck you. Hmm. 
weird panels on the floor. Hope that's not going to be important. Hello? If I remember right, there's literally a part of this game where Isaac is just like, Hey, you can pull spikes off the dead ones. Here's literally the same fucking... Ow, ow, ow. Stop it. He's like, you can pull spikes off the dead ones. Here's literally the same fucking video file that I found in the first game. And then he... Or, not the first game, but the second game. And then he just plays it. It's very funny to me. It's just like, we didn't want to come up with a clever way of explaining this mechan... Clever new way of explaining this mechanic to you. So here's the one from the last game. Oh shit! So those are uh, the new version of the swarmers. Why isn't this door open? Oh. Guess I gotta turn this crank. Hmm. Don't like that. He he steals your semiconductor. Oh. Um. I didn't intend for that to happen. But it's probably fine. Sucks. Oh, but since we found that... Scap Artifact 6. Uh, private transmission from Lieutenant Commander S. Kettle, CMS Terra Nova, to Captain A. Belknap, CMS Roanoke. This is supposed to be... Oh, wait, no. I've already read that one. Okay, so we've read everything for Chapter 4. What was I saying about those character about those creatures that they were the new version of the swarmers? They are a combination of the new version of the swarmers and the new version of the infectors. Isaac, what is that horrible noise? Uh, I think I pulled out something I shouldn't have. The gravity plating is tearing itself apart. Whoa. The message is a warning to someone named Serrano on the planet's surface. Did you find a way to decode it? Yeah, the encryption key is in the office of Laura Engstrom. Oh, let me see if I can find it. Yes, here she is. I'll send it to your locator. I know I killed that guy on the way in, but you can never be too careful. Oh, shit. Ah, beans. Oh, okay. Not going that way. I don't think we got any of, like, the overloaded gravity plating in Dead Space 2, which is unfortunate because that was kind of one of my favorite hazards in Dead Space 1. Nope. Oh! Kicks you. Like, it's a really cool hazard, because I love the effect that it has on enemies, where it just fucking yeets them upwards, and they splatter. It's a lot of fun. Oh, oh shit! Ugh. 
Ah, beans. I kind of like the way that the Splody Boys move now. Because you'll notice that they actually move slightly differently um, from the way that they used to. Uh, before they would just kind of like lumber forward, but this time the way that they crawl uh, blocks their Splody Sack. Therefore making it harder to hit, but making it much more rewarding when you do hit it. Got it. Hey, Santos, I'm sending you the decryption key now. I see it. Hold on, I'll apply it to the message. Hide Rosetta? Who's she? Who the, the fuck? Order. Her research could be the key to all of this. But why issue a cleanse order if it would destroy such an important secret? Maybe they panicked. Or maybe they knew something we didn't. Isaac, thanks for looking into this. It could prove very useful. Good to hear. Well, I'm heading back. We've got a long road ahead of us. Isaac out. Alright. Let's, let's go. Let's leave. Get out of this fucking house of horrors. Okay, there's, so a lot of the other structures that you can find, uh, some, ow, shitting, fuck, goddamn, who did that? There you are, you motherfucker. Oh, I'm too far away, hold on, I gotta get closer. A lot of the other structures that you can find around here have, like, items and stuff on, on it, too. Do I have a cat hair in my mouth? How the hell, how the hell did I get a cat hair in my mouth? Raggy, what did you do? How did you do this? That is an incredible magic trick. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get our ass uh to the Terra Nova, and then we're going to go ahead and call it a night. I want to thank everybody for coming by the stream. I hope you all had a good time. I know I did. Um, genuinely, I like Dead Space 3, and I'm excited to play more of it, and I'm excited to experience the co-op for the first time. Um, if you enjoyed the stream, you can subscribe here on Twitch. We have special emotes for subscribers. You can also follow me on Twitter at Sane underscore Intolerant, or on YouTube at YouTube.com slash Sane Intolerant, where I post all the streams after they happen. Thumbnail art was done by my friend Gabby, who you can find on Twitter at Serena Midori. That's S-E-R-E-N-A-M-I-D-O-R-I. -E -E uh, Gabby is an absolute peach, and I would highly recommend giving her a follow. Um, VTuber boy here, Acid Shark, was done by Audrian B of Team Catpole. You can find on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube at Team Catpole. That's T-E-A-M-C-A-T-P-L-E. -E. Uh, don't email them. Don't. Stop. Don't fucking cut it out uh they are streaming right now they are streaming persona 5 and we will be rating them uh when we finish up here uh buh, 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 buh. upcoming streams um wednesday more near replicant thursday we actually play god of war the Terra Nova. which way to the shuttle 
Santos, you found the Impound records. What did they say? Only that the shuttle was decommissioned. They were going I'm going to wait for them to finish out. talking. Great. So basically, nobody knows? Uh, there must be more detailed shipping records somewhere. I'll take a look around the ship. We have hit the part of the game where Robert Norton is a piece of shit and just constantly, like, trying to sandbag everybody's everybody's plans and then getting sandbagged in return. So that's going to be fun to deal with. Um, Friday, I believe Team Capital are going to be back on. I don't know what we're going to be doing yet. Um, we're either going to be starting a new stream series that we will be doing every other week or we will be doing a one-off idea I had recently. Um, so uh, keep an eye out for that and I will uh, let you know on Twitter uh, what we're going to be doing. And then, of course, next Saturday, uh, we'll be continuing Dead Space 3. Uh, I am excited to show off uh, more of the game uh, and uh, get into Chapter 5. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Like I said, we are going to be raiding Team Catpole. So let me go ahead and get that set up. Let me pull their stream up on my phone so I can watch this happen in real time once I do it. Um... Uh, and yeah, I'll see you next time on the shark stream. Same shark time, same shark channel. Take care, everybody.